kind words. And uh, thank you for organizing this very short notice. This small chair. Uh, a few words before I start. There is no uh, boundary between talking and performing. Which brings us to the first aspect of campus theatre. Nobody talks, people only perform. And that's a problem. Because I see no conversations on stage. I see role playing on stage. Second and fundamental issue with campus theatre is there are many good things about campus theatre. The first good thing about campus theatre is campus theatre campus theatre happens. So which is wonderful. But that aside, uh, of the many issues that campus theatre face or faces, we more precise. The first being what is the role of conversation? I haven't seen largely dramatic societies in India. Having worked with quite a few across cities and not EU alone, that a campus theatre group's season begins with eight or nine people from all walks of life coming to talk about eight or nine issues. For example, the first day is globalization. Second day is the politics of getting hospitalized. The third day is how do we look at gender from all perspectives, both masculine, feminine, the intertextuality, the intersections. Fourth, what do you mean by a set, a light, or a stage? Can there be a light designer for a street play? If there is a light designer for a street play, then how does he design light? Can he bring this huge canopy like structure, which is probably a large black canvas tent which four people are holding, and at some point of time when they let go of it, the sunlight streams in normally on the face of a street play performer? Could light be designed in the street play? Why are legendary eminent light designers so lost in the sunlight? Fifth. Very, 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 very fundamental issue. What is a workshop method? Let's also assume the fact that most theatre groups that does workshop before a performance, the fundamental problem in those workshops is they are theatre games. Now you might ask me that there are theatre, we have to do theatre games before we, before we are actually doing theatre. Of course you have to. There are two ways about it. But let's also understand that what is the percentage of people studying in campus who can do theatre after they pass out? Probably 1%. Probably 5%. There is no data on this. But it doesn't take rocket science to figure out the number of people who will do theatre. When I'm in theatre, I do not mean that in Bombay you're waiting for a television series or a film to happen, and in between, because the rents are very high and the situation is fairly grim, you do theatre because you have to pass time. I'm not calling that theatre. Though no, I have nothing against anybody doing that kind of theatre because at the end of the day theatre only gets enriched even by their presence. However, having said that, theatre is not fundamentally their goal. A bunch of uh, young campus students who are now in uh, different uh, jobs, assignments in their lives were with me 15 years back in Bombay. And a couple of them went out to meet friends in the night. So I asked them, who, who are your friends from? They said, they're from my grand song. So I said, what are they doing now? They're doing X, they're doing Y, they're doing Z, they're doing production, they're in some casting agency. They're working as a fourth AD, fifth AD, sixth AD. But, I mean, almost unilaterally, nobody said they're doing theatre. So then what did these grand, long, three years of campus engagement, play, house parties, post-production binges, coming close to each other. What were you coming close for if at the end of the day you are not doing theatre? Was theatre an excuse? Was it a distinct way of being known in college when maybe the route to debate or the route to quiz or the route to solo classical music is a little more tougher? So, so theatre is a refuge, at least I am known amongst a group. Is it just that? 
Is it deep interest for performing arts? Now, none of these are none of these are uh, are finger pointing, because in that case, the fifth finger would point at myself. At the same point of time, it's an issue. It's an issue that play after play, year after year, director after director has been invited in campuses to do theatre are not responding to socio-politics of our times. A young man associated with organizing this show was telling me the other day that there are societies that's asking him, uh, is, your, is your content too political? No, what is too political? If it's not too political, then let's not do theater. <clears throat> I mean, I'm not here to do theater. I'm not here to do I'm not saying we are not here to do theater. I'm nobody to say we. But I'm not doing theatre if I can't respond to my times. And you might say that, you know, my play also responds to times. So what I'm doing a cliche play? A cliche play will have certain tropes in it which are responding to time. That's like stretching everything. Responding to time is also taking names. Responding to time is also standing and taking responsibility of the ramifications of your action. Responding to times also means that, yeah, fine, you don't recklessly use proper nouns but you do use them. So, I'm not surprised and bitter that DU Campus Theatre has about 65 scripts which has been done 6.5 million times by about 85 groups ad nauseum. And I'm tired when each group says, you know sir, we are doing something exciting. And I hear the same script again. For example, Fritz Currency's refund. I have charged refund about 850 times. Deepak G's court martial. I have judged it about 1350 times. Ashok Lal's adaptation of Kurosawa in a script called Eight Mahmuli Adri. I have judged that about 2000 times. Gagandama Bajao Piyush I have judged it about not, not a lot, lot of times, 125 times. Then, for example, once one group told me, we are doing Nimbal Barma. They very excited. We are doing Nimbal Barma is tough. Probably one of the finest Hindi writers ever. Especially in terms of magic players. I put Nimbal Barma, though maybe it's controversial, ahead of markets. Distinctly ahead of markets. So, something like Lal Pinky Chat. So I said, which play are you doing? Lo and behold, the play was called Romeo, Juliet or Andhera. Romeo and Juliet in Darkness. Check play, translated to Hindi. I've heard seen that play by many groups, 17 to 18 times. So the guy is not doing Nirmal Varma. He is doing the Nirmal Varma already floating in the market. So scripts in Delhi have this beautiful life. 16 scripts. I think each time the Xerox becomes more shiny. So that the group that picks up the Xerox thinks that it's a new Xerox. So it's a new group. Now, there is nothing wrong in doing an older classic. Absolutely not. Older classics have so many shelf lives. I mean, there is nothing wrong in doing Adhya Adhya. But for heaven's sake, don't do Bindu Bhatra's second grade translation taught in the universe. It's not even a translation. It's called Halfway House. I think they can take the word house and way out. It's called half. It's, it's how not to translate bone rubbish. Or how to translate bone rubbish badly. <coughs> or how to, how to kill Rakesh in five easy steps. So there's no problem in doing Adhyat. Adhyat will be relevant probably till the end of time. Much that gender, sexuality, stereotypes, cliches, gays, they all transform. Even in that transformation, Adhyat will remain a very, very important document. Or Ashartai. Or Rusovitsky, Pelikir, and something here. But for heaven's sake, if you have nothing new to say, then don't do it. Classics are classics when you also object to some of the stagings because you've staged it radically differently. And your radical different, different staging, I may object to it as much as you may object to my radical different staging. But that objection is so valuable because the classic has the power to take in one million different interpretations and still remain a classic. The reason when Heidel Muller does Hamlet Machine <coughs> from William Shakespeare's Hamlet 
I mean, there's nothing really, really happening today. Hamlet Machine, in fact, is a long poem. It's not even a play. I mean, you can download it. There are versions which are available for download. Normal Google. You don't go to torrent and search for the book. There's so many versions of Muller's play. And it really doesn't sound like Hamlet. But it does in more ways than one. Now, Hamlet doesn't become weak because there is Hamlet Machine. Hamlet Machine doesn't become weak if, if, if it's a thatcher of another play, a structure of another play. Then the mother play also becomes stronger. But why do you want to revisit classics when you have nothing new to say? And if you have nothing new to say, then do say something new. Because that script that you are copying said something new in their times. So when that doesn't happen, it worries me, bothers me. Now somebody might say, why should it bother you? Who are you? Are you a caretaker of theater? That's not no. It just bothers me. I'm not saying it bothers the way. I'm a caretaker of theater. I'm a servant of theater like hopefully everybody else in this room. And hopefully like everybody else in the room, we are here because hopefully there's a shared love for theater. Hopefully at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock in the evening in any city in India, when we have a choice of cinema and theater, we of course will watch cinema. But more often than not, we'll also watch theater. We'll also get into the professionalism of paying for it. We'll also get into professionalism of respecting our performance time. We'll also get into the fact that you never really pay for art. You just pay for artist time. Because even a full house of NCP doesn't really give back a group the money they've invested in. I don't think a full house of Shiram Center in a certain light play gives back any money. Aside a performance satisfaction of what is a full house and not what is a full house. If I run about 200 shows my play, I'll get about, and, and primarily in campuses, I'll get about 75 full houses. I'll get about 65 half houses. I'll get about a chunk of the play done for six, seven, eight people. That's fine with me. In fact, when I do it for six, seven, eight people, I'll use the space completely differently and turn it into an intimate conversation. And when I do it for 750 people, I'll make it more choreography heavy because the play is elastic. Cinema is not elastic. So I have, no, I have no cribbing about the fact that six or six hundred watch the play. I have cribbing about the fact that don't stage the play for six people as a Thomas Rocks copy, you do it for six hundred. And if you cannot do that, then it's not there. Can I do that successfully? Maybe yes, maybe no. In some places it works, some places it doesn't. But the important model that I've run from the story, if you can be a model, is the five ailments that's ailing campus theatre. And I'm no antidote or cure because I'm searching for the answers too. One, a child doesn't know elasticity of space. How is the space elastic? How could you do the same play using probably the black contraption behind? How could the flush bathroom sound be incorporated in the play if the play needs it, not for showing off? How could you invert this audience and use the steps and do the play? And if a random audience comes in between the show, it is expected that they join the play from there. How do you use the play differently? Theatre, campus, groups in India are not aware of flexibility of spaces. We are still stuck in essentially stage or street. God bless us. Second problem. Where do we understand? the dynamics of the body in terms of body and sound. I could be like this and be heard here. I could be like this and not be heard in auditorium. I could be like this and the space is, I mean, so intimate that this is way too loud. But I could be like this and probably I'm doing play in a drawing room. How do you adapt soundscape? What is the, what is the relationship between a space and the sound. How do you how do you go on the non-microphone way and use soundscapes essentially in the body to look at the space? Second problem: soundscape is an issue. It's not an issue because it's largely not an obvious issue because most people are going for competitions, and competitions are hardly bothered about soundscape or space. You just you just shove the group on stage and. Right? Hopefully there will be some prize money in the end. Now there is a new, new, new interesting phenomenon in different colleges in the UI here. All competitions have turned into festivals. 
So before it was competition, now it's festival. But the festival in campus was equally problematic. Why is it called a festival? Because all groups get the same money for transportation. That is why it's a festival. It is not a festival because X number of groups are <coughs> sitting and watching Y number of plays by other groups and are actually exchanging notes. How could they have done this play better and how could they have done that play better? It is not happening. If somebody says it's happening, it's bullshit. It's not happening. Let's not justify campus theatre because all of us have done campus theatre at some point of time. That's all you're being devil's advocate. I mean, we are the angels exported from all parts of Mars. It is not happening. Fourth part. What is text? What is intertextual? How much of non-fiction is coming to theatre? All of you are now children. You know English honors, philosophy, Paul science, physics, BBA. But when was the last time a competition play, and I use that with all sarcasm, in DU was staging of a poem. At most a poem has been put in an already made play. You know, it's so that you can tell the audience, you know, I can also put in poetry. So, so one, of, one, one of my students uh, went and performed a poem in the ECA audition. And, and uh, the, the, the person who was, uh, who was adjudicating or judging or what do you call it? Inspector. Let's use a better word. Conscience. Maybe that sounds nice. Said so that why are you stating a poem? We are not that name. So hey. We have we have moved on across the world with a beautiful word called performance text. My grandmother's recipe can be performed. I can give you a, I can give you a dish without olives and slowly put olives and talk about how olives are disappearing from Palestine. What do you mean by this is not a play? I'm not saying that the person who did the play is equipped enough to do, 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 do uh, poetry as a theater piece. No, maybe not. But I'm, I'm saying that the poetry is a valid device to do theater. Mahabharata is the longest poem in the world. And if it's not a play then, and it's not a poem, and it's not a long novel, and it's not a collection of short stories. Then why is it Mahabharata? It's a repository of everything. It's, it's so fluid, it's so shape shifting. You really can't uh, straight jacket Mahabharata into one, one genre. You can't really even straight jacket maybe an episode or a, or, 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 or a subdivision like Sundar Khan in Ramayana in one genre. Because it is genre less. As simple as that. So again, I see. Kali Karan Manch. I never see Kavita Karan Manch because that needs time. Kali Karan Manch has enough Kalis, get two actors, two soloists on stage, put a little light on the face, they tell a story, call it storytelling high film theatre, it sounds better. Kavita Karan Manch, to which you know? This is the Kavita Karan Manch, Ghanda. Was okay at that stage. But poetry has its own metaphors, it has its own afterlife. And it's not poetry versus prose. It's not fiction versus non-fiction. It's not Satyajitra versus Ritikrata. It is not Gandhi versus Ambedkar. It is also Gandhi and Ambedkar. Prose and non-prose. So largely, as I think very, uh, very objectively, objectivity is also subjective, my objective. I find these are glaring gaps in campus theatre. And I'm also very happy and sad about one thing. It's not that the campus theatre doesn't know the gaps. But it's a very interesting situation. Uh, they know the gaps. But they're saying that, boss, I won't do anything about it. It's not that they don't know the gaps. So maybe that's why third year kids grew tentacles in their heads and start conducting workshops. Maybe that's why MA first year kids go and judge given competitions. One year back they were debating themselves. Objectivity and subjectivity is also a very important question. And that question is, I also have to see my subject from a distance. I also have to spend enough time away from my subject to then take part in the evaluation of that subject. It isn't about qualification. 
it isn't about I am good enough. It's also about the fact that what is my fundamental neutrality? Yeah, maybe my journal, I prefer. Maybe there's a weakness for a journal, maybe there's a weakness for names and numbers, but that weakness can't be just an intrinsic weakness. One has to work on these weaknesses. So, all these flaws I have taken part in. And maybe I'm very positive of all these flaws. Maybe speaking this to you also means taking a trip down Beverly Lane myself and knowing that maybe my, my hand also has blood. But the point is, maybe my generation failed to clean that. You probably could clean it faster. But you can only clean it faster if you know that you're bleeding. If you don't want to know you're bleeding, then that's like those faulty hip plugs one medical company has sold for two years in a row if you read the newspaper. And for two years we were silent, having put, I mean, 40 hip implants on people after people after people and endangering their lives. And then in afterthought we said, you know, the following patients we really can't uh, uh, now, what do you call it, evaluate or trace because you've just given them hip implants which are 40. The entire Maharaja attitude. Somebody has a completely wrong hip implant which is just ruining one life. Under the guise of, under the guise of uh, uh, great medical safety, and just mostly, I don't think it's a compelling, compelling theatrical piece to do, provided we rise above the 16 Xerox copies of 16 squares and that glorious street play, how our matter play for black with the jeans, 16 formations in the top, five times falling down, and how many coming up in the end. I can close my eyes. And I think there should be one patented trademark for DU Street Plays. I love that. Because from beginning to end, I can predict to exactly how it goes on. Especially that formation. Where one boy or girl goes at the top. And then the formation breaks. And then that lovely song which is sung across the college to get problems. Even the tune hasn't changed properly for one million years. <laughs> so it's, it's beautiful. And there is no resistance to it. The virasat of one society to the next society is as Sehi Kant. As Sehi Kant, I have to say. Then as Or as Sehi playmakers go, Hulao, to as Sehi Kant. As Sehi Kant. What happens to Lord Zing Dhanamuri and Nadavka happens to Street Train. As Sehi Kant. As he went on, you get another girl to GK1 name. Another girl, another girl. Jangir Puri, Jangir Puri. And there is nothing welcome about the roads in welcome. Now, both the marked areas here. That the difference between, you know, somebody's attitude. I find the great thing just in the theatre. There is a Jangir Puri as well. On one end is New Friends Hall. On the other end is Bhattala House. And it's a good shot. Somebody's asked you, where are you going? You say, but clouds. They look at you. And you say, new friends call me. Can I join you? <laughs> That's the interesting cross section of campus theory. But clouds needs to be done for different colony sets. In done versus sales. Or cells, both probably the same, no? It almost becomes like a like this interesting three channel. Tobotex saying, you don't know where to go. The Tobotex saying has been, I mean, I also love that because that's been done by the EU about 1.2 million times. Even the EU to Everybody is told Tobotex saying. 1.2 million times. Manto, of course, is dying because. I mean, Manto never had it so well. After 100 years of Manto, Manto became probably. I mean, he was. He became like. Gap. Oh. Marks and Spencer. Gap. Gap, I think, sounds nice. Gap is a nice name. It shows the gap. Yeah, Petrol station said, I'm in the gap. 
Now they write down the groups. Mai na mantu. Everybody knows mantu. Mantu na badla rahaniya. Mantu yat. The only mantu is that. A mantu is a super sharp writer. Nobody does get a strong concern. This is probably his one of his best pieces. Again, that's very subjective. The letters he wrote are concerned. Or letter to him. The letter of Manto in the form of a short story hyphen letter, or maybe a performance piece, is is just undone. It's like the 150 years of Tagore. Everybody did beautiful Tagore. Nobody managed to do probably a play on the letter giving 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 the knighthood back after Jallianwala, because that's too political Tagore. That Tagore doesn't sell. It's almost 100 years of Jallianwala. Mind you, nobody will do the letter again in the 100 years will happen. Because Tigot doesn't fit in. He doesn't. He looks meditative. He has a long beard. He stands. He looks rishi types. So don't disturb the rishi. But the rishi was disturbed. <coughs> But he won't disturb him now. No. He won't disturb himself. When he brought Jodo to Shantini, being the pioneer of Indian Jodo, when he uh, when he uh, wrote that stinging letter to Lord Kemsford after Jallianwala Bagh. Or the same Tagore who's reacted to every some of the most major world events across the world with searing poem. I mean, one of my favorite poems is a poem called Africa. Tagore wrote Africa, never having visited Africa. But Africa seems to be, as a poem, to be one of the one of the one of the very very interesting take of a continent from a writer of another continent writing in Bangla. Africa keeps coming back in my work, maybe subconsciously, because because. The distance is really, really covered in metaphors. So, how do we build a play? Can a play be built? You have two shortcuts. You tell me. I love the shortcuts too. You say no, a play can't be built, but yeah, yeah, it can be built. Let's call it improvised. Let's call it your smartness versus my smartness. Let's call it. Uh, let's call it uh, devised. That's your device versus my device. Let's call it um, amalgamation of different situations. But how do we still build it as we go? How much do you incorporate that day's newspaper? How much do you incorporate what you saw and felt strongly about, and it has a resonance in the play? So, for example, if there is a Bunch of chairs in front of you, and um, so let's call it a fortress. And um, an arrangement done by Oedipus before death, that there will be alternate alternate kingship. Oedipus and Polynices will kind of alternate and rule the kingdom. Oedipus refuses when Polynices' turn comes. By then, Polynices gets an army with six foreign princes. And decides to attack Etiopia's kingdom. And after attacking the kingdom, a bloody war ensues. There is death. The two brother fights duel with each other, and both manages to kill each other with swaths of blood, all dripping in the floor, across all kinds of bodies. Creon becomes the king. Creon is a son, human, who loves and uh, primarily proposes to Antigone for marriage. Antigone is open to that idea, so she is also modern, as much as modernity of those times can be. However, something interesting happens. Antigone's hypothesis. In that whole idea of killing each other, once dead body was presented. Interesting, presentable dead body. That's presentable dead body. And the other dead body was beyond redemption. You really can't identify the dead body. Smashed, smithereens, into pulp and pieces. So Graham decides uh, to take sides for future themes. Will bury Etiopius in state honors and anoint him 
as a martyr. And policies will rot and die because we've got to take sides. And Gregor knew that both were scumbags. But he chose the better looking dead body as the martyr and the worse looking dead body as vulture's prey. Choose lie, to just decompose, to be kind of uh, made into a model trophy of how a traitor looks. And think, had her own opinion about the brothers. He wasn't very flattering. She knew that um, both of them had problems. She knew that both of them had their own ideas of masculinity. She knew that both of them were, were essentially boorish, cruel, problematic. Both of them lived down, lived up, and diffidently waved off other people's self-respect. She knew. But she also knew that uh, either of you both of them were same very you can't cherry pick. So she decides to bury policies. Now there's a complication. Hebel is king's son. Do you get married? Happy future. Life insurance company. Don't look shame on Mohammed. Uh, the marriage will go for a six because if uh, Antigone decides to bury Polynices, who's been declared as a state traitor, she'll also be put to death. Ispen wants to join Antigone and say, uh, she's saying that, you know, I would die with you also, sorry. Sister, you can't be the hero of me. Eight t-shirt when they come to two t-shirts. Two gaps. <laughs> To mind the gap. Antigone calls up Rayon and says, not calls up, calls up. <laughs> Rayon and says, arrest this man. It's mine. And time. It's my protest. And I live by my protest. So she moves out and decides to put a little mud and dirt on the body as the first attempt to bury them, which itself is anti-state, anti-nation. So she moves to a public place and decides to bury the body. Crayon meets her, he says, don't do this. I'll be forced to take an extreme step. But nevertheless, she doesn't care. She is going to bury and continue burying till he puts her to death. So, she puts a little sand and a little more and a little more to make the death look more responsible. To make the death look a little more respectable. To essentially tell the king that you really can't cherry pick all kinds of death. Graham repeatedly says, why do you want to do this? I'll put you to death. You can marry him and just be a queen. Produce children. Ensure that the kingdom flowers. You know, become, become proud of this entire, entire idea of legacy. And she says, oh, oh, just a second. Just a second. Marry your son. Marry the child. The, the, the mechanics of life. Is that all what I was born for? No, I'm not saying that, but I'm merely saying that you were also born for this. You were also. Yeah, probably I was. But I wouldn't like to. I'd like to die. You'd like to die with two brothers. Whoever I killed state burial and whoever I did not, both were basically scumbags. Both
both were basically people who are uh, who, who in their spare time is uh, snooping around to eat what is in your plate. Who basically trying to look at the length of your skirt or your 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 your, your shoes or your your suit. So basically, people who are who didn't deserve to live here. So one gets a state burial, one doesn't get a state burial. That's my issue. Why are you burning your fingers on it? This is what wrong is wrong. Wrong done to wrong persons doesn't make that wrong right. No. What do you mean? They were traitors. One I turned into a hero and the other remained a traitor. At the end of the day, both of them were not surviving. For hero, I will do a stone temple. The traitor will have nothing. But basically, the undercurrent is both were traitors. So why? Why do you want to cut short your life for these two people? And you say because um, I just feel like I just generally feel like, you know, it's like, um, it's like, um, I just feel like, it's like, you know, you're young and you're campus and you're doing theatre, and there's this English speaking Cholala like us, he's saying, you know, there's a problem with what you're doing. Thank you, sir, I just feel like. <laughs> You've done the same scripts over and over again. Don't tell me that they're like cutting edge. <laughs> so it's my college for three years. It's my campus for three years. You were there. We are time. No use of this. But I still want to. I want to. So we still pay the coffee. Coffee of I mean the coffee that you have. So we paid the empty from the Ramsar Sun. <laughs> Next time we won't even pay that. So it's like that, you know, it's like, my activity was not so big now. No, the others are not big now. I could be big too. I am probably. Yeah. We do see a Greek classic, which is already reductive. Um, so, so yes. I really feel like, because I think it's wrong. Like your father, you just die like that. We were probably born wrong. Die like that. Don't live like this. Clearly, your idea of what is right and wrong is your idea of what is right and wrong. And your idea of statecraft is your idea of statecraft. And your idea of ruling the state is your idea of ruling the state. But that is not my idea of essentially statecraft. Because to me, the foundation lies in what is fundamentally right and essential and fundamentally what is wrong. And your skewed point of view, your point of view that's one-sided, may not be my point of view. My window may not have your kind of window panes. I could embrace my window, open, <coughs> look, see, gaze, understand, and decide. I don't need wooden partitions. I will grace for blemished view. So you decided to die. I have already wasted about 249 something, sir. Yeah, I will die. I will put you to prison. Before that, go back home, be with the attendant. You have a chance to marry my son. And what happened to him? Sorry, I thought your son was like me, or I am like him, or we like each other. He, he, he likes justice. If he stops liking justice, if he stops liking what is truth, then your son will then start looking ugly. Then start looking what he is not. And I fell in love with some other son. I wouldn't like to marry the son for what he is not. So I guess... We go our own ways, or he go my way, or probably my way is his way. We'll figure that out, sir. Don't worry. We'll have a private modes of communication. WhatsApp. Messenger. Of that of those kinds that time. Uh, uh, 
Facebook uh, friendly question, let me answer that. <laughs> um, block, block the messenger or say or, or, or all those missing stories in the world put in Snapchat or say a longish tweet because we've forgotten to write letters or, or maybe just missing you overnight or just looking at an empty coffee cup or sitting at one end of the road and looking at an empty road divider or walking back late in the night the dog is barking and nobody knows who's more afraid you or the dog we'll figure it out sir now uh, please Jamie in any case you will you have to uphold the law and more and more people are knowing that I am committed to burying the dead body so could we get this done and dusted so I'm thinking he moves Behave. 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 
behave, 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 behave. I don't want to behave. So, Antigone looks up, feels the earth for one last time, tells the first guard to talk, and the guard talks about salary, ration, conditions, and Antigone is hearing. Look at the guard. Even he knows his protest, but I don't. I'm royal. I'm exclusive. I'm inside the bracket. I'm privileged. I'm privileged to be P. I'm privileged in times normal. 18 points. Fits a beautiful A4 size printout. I am, I am. I'm centered. I'm Zen. I am theatrically game played before the game. Shall I write a to you? He said, no, I'll write it. No, I'll write it. If I carry your letter, I'll be in trouble. She dictates the letter. Take back the ring. Sorry for... Sorry for... Being such a joy in your life. I still love you. The ring comes off. Folded page of the letter. Then, uh, then what does she do? She goes to the next room and uh, decides to. Is there a next room? Prison is one cell. Maybe the guard went out. Maybe there was a room. He was just being, just being somebody 
who believes that every person dissenting in the nation oh, are basically to be robbed, to be eaten, to be, to be picked up. More precisely, they could be treated like we've cleaned the country. The nation is clean now. Square on He moves to one end of the stage to justify the fact that the chair is empty, just to be.
Why are you searching for the freshness? You might get it right wrongly, you may not get it right at all. You might get it right for one second, for 15 seconds, for one minute, for 2.5 seconds. In that 2.5 seconds when you think that what you're doing is really fresh, that 2.5 seconds is when you do theater. The rest of the time you're basically rehearsing to search for that one minute of your life. And you may not get that one minute of lifetime, I haven't so far. But I'm still very, very convinced that someday I'll get that one minute right. Someday in the middle of the play, with that one minute, I'll get it right. It won't justify it. You'll be immense, immense, immense pleasure that this is why I came to do theatre. This is why despite marketing, sales, cleverness, any, 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 any kind of device, till one man or woman is alive in this world, and there is one person in the audience, we can do an act of theatre. And that's what makes us know. We are impractical, we are problematic, our plays are never finished. Uh, they are neither experimental nor mainstream. They are the shitty in between. Uh, so to end today's sharing, I'd rather like to be shitty in between than well finished and beautiful.